सो एनी वे एज आई वो सेंग वेलकम टू पार्ट टू ऑफ वीडियो दैट नो बडी आस्क फॉर अबाउट अ मूवी सीरीज दैट नो वन केयर्स अबाउट एनी मोर सो लेट्स जस्ट गेट राइट इन टू इट सिंस वी ऑलरेडी रोस्टेड पार्ट वन एंड टू इन द लास्ट वीडियो विच इफ यू हैवन वॉच आई डोंट ब्लेम यू बट देर बी अ लिंक समवेयर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वॉच इट सो लेट्स गेट टू धूम थ्री सो आई एम गोइंग टू रिकैप द मूवी फॉर यू जस्ट लाइक लास्ट टाइम विच होपफुली वोट टेक मच टाइम बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ दिस मूवीज रन टाइम कंसिस ऑफ स्लो मोशन एक्शन सीक्वेंसेज हैव इन पर्टिकुलरली हेल्ड अप यू वोट हैव टू वरी अबाउट दैट विद मी द मूवी स्टार्ट विद अ फ्लैश बैक Jackie Shroff has two sons and their identical twins it's later revealed that they are identical twins but we don't have time for that okay they're both Amir Khan so Jackie Shroff runs a circus and he uses his kids identicalness for one of his magic tricks he essentially puts one kid in a box and uh, it appears to be empty to the audience and then the other kid shows up somewhere else and it seems like it was the same kid they call it the boy in the box jackie shroff also has taken a loan from a bank and has been defaulting his payments for quite some time so jackie shroff makes a plea to the bank that he will put on a show for them and if they like it they will i guess like give him more time to make his payments so the people from the bank watch the show and they seem to be determined to not like it so jackie shroff thinks that it's unfair and shoots himself in the head in front of both his children the incident leaves both of them quite traumatized um one of them is named sahir the other one is named summer and there is this level of implied mental illness and trauma for uh, a lot of the characters throughout the film jackie shroff shoots himself in the head so i mean i assume that he had some form of depression and sahir the first one of his sons cart wheels off of a bridge at the end of the movie and uh, his other son summer uh, has seems to be on the autism spectrum i know that's not a mental illness it's a developmental disorder but still the reason that i'm mentioning all this is because this is the first movie and hopefully the last movie in the franchise where they have tried to give the villain a back story before this john ibrahim just looked cool and wanted to steal money in the second one rithik roshan wanted to look cool and uh, steal some stuff that would get him more money in the third one however amir khan wants to bankrupt a bank that has all its branches in one city so you know there's a lot of pathos there i think there could be three reasons for the addition of this villain's back story thing in this movie the first and the most obvious one is to add more depth to the characters the second one could be and i'm just shooting in the dark here by the way because of amir khan's complete inability to play a character that's not sympathetic to the audience the third one is the one that i actually like the specific back story that they've been given makes the end of the film more tragic in my opinion as in sahir and summer's father jacky shroff kills himself because he wasn't able to achieve his dream of having a successful indian circus in chicago he wasn't able to focus on what he already had his children i'm not blaming a fictional character for committing suicide due to depression by the way i just mean to point out that it's tragic especially because in the end his sons also end up killing themselves because they are so hell bent upon getting revenge for their father's death instead of being able to appreciate the fact that they already achieved their father's dream which was running the great indian circus and now that circus is going to be run by katrina kaif isn't it tragic okay when i say hey, katrina kaif i mean her character because i have watched this movie an embarrassing number of times 
in order to make this video and I still wouldn't be able to tell you her character's name. And that's not her fault, by the way. It's just, she's just the love interest. There's nothing more to her than that. Speaking of Katrina Kaif, she got a lot of undue criticism for using a stunt double in the film. Every actor in this movie who had a stunt used a stunt double. Amir Khan, Abhishek Bachchan, I guess. I don't know if Uday Chopra had any stunts. So if you had to compare each of these actors against the other ones, which you shouldn't be doing in the first place, but still, if you had to, you would have to do that on the basis of their acting skills and their dancing skills. As far as acting goes, Katrina Kaif has done a decent job. I mean, as decent as Abhishek Bachchan and Uday Chopra. And as far as dancing goes, she is easily the best dancer out of the entire cast of not just this movie, of all the Doom movies. Anyway, before Jackie Shroff kills himself, uh, one of his sons, Sahir, who's the thief in this movie, uh, was begging one of the bankers to give them another chance. So Jackie Shroff tells his son to never beg to anyone ever. So he starts stealing. So the first robbery happens and uh, Jackie Shroff's last words were bank walon tumhari aisi ki taisi. And so his sons after robbing a branch of the bank uh, write the same in Hindi across the lockers or whatever. And uh, since it's written in Hindi uh, they assume it's an Indian thief. So they call Who do you think they would have called? Hmm? So they call Jay and Ali. Why? Could you not find a translator? How would you translate Bank Walo Tumhari Aisi Ki Taisi in English? Bank Walo Tumhari Aisi Ki Taisi. Bankers, you're this, that. This has an apostrophe, by the way. So they call Jay and Ali. And, you know, their scenes have become particularly unbearable to sit through in this one. And the reason for that, I think, is that their characters have been completely assassinated. Anything you knew about them, apart from the fact that Jay is actually really stupid and Ali is actually really annoying, Everything else has been like wiped clean. Remember how I said a pregnant sweetie completely disappears from the franchise in the first half of Doom 2? Yeah, so I'm going to assume that Jay is a father now, but we don't hear or talk about or see any of that. We don't know where he lives. We don't know anything else about him. They've completely forgotten that he used to have a life of his own. And as for Ali, there's this really awkward moment in Dhoom 2 where uh, Jai Dikshit says to Ali that if I didn't think you would be useful, then why would I have brought you here? And uh, it's awkward because you know as an audience member that there is no point to Ali being here anymore. They're not even trying to catch a gang of thieves who ride motorcycles. And so the only skill set he has, which is riding a motorcycle, is rendered useless. Why is he here? To bring comic relief? He's really bad at that as well. Also in my last video, I said that the Dhoom series is a series of heist films. I was wrong about that. This is a series of buddy cop movies, okay? Because the only thing that's constant in all of the sequels or whatever is Jay and Ali. But the thing is, in this buddy cop movie, the cops, Jay and Ali, aren't even buddies. They have no chemistry whatsoever. They don't even have an emotional bond. They don't even know anything about each other, I think. You remember how Abhishek Bachchan was ridiculed for saying that for him, the Dhoom series has always been about the adventures of Jay and Ali. 
um i think he was right but the problem is in my opinion is that someone should tell the filmmakers that as well i don't think they know anyway so in the robbery sahir and samar used the boy in the box trick to fool the cops i mean the way that they use it is while the cops would be chasing one of them uh that identical twin would hide and the other one would appear from somewhere else and so the cops would get confused so anyway jay and ali arrive and uh, you remember how i said in the last video that jay dikshit's plan is the same every time he gets someone to act as a double agent for him and uh, infiltrate the you know the gang of thieves or whatever amir khan in this movie uses jay dikshit's own plan against him with far more success than he's ever had with it it's like watching that scene in the godfather where sunny beats his brother in law with his own shoe on the street so anyway amir khan sahir there's two of them already let's not create any more confusion i'm sorry sahir goes to jay dikshit and uh, pretends to help them in their investigation he tells him this cover story which is so fake it's funny he tells jay dikshit that he used to work in a circus with a clown who used the same trick the boy in the box as the thief is using right now to fool cops and uh, he got angry once and said tumhari aisi ki taisi sahir even tells him that he is using the same trick at his own circus now he even tells jaydikshit that the guy he's talking about would always wear clown makeup so he couldn't see his face ever um itne mein to cid wale bhi shayad check kar lete uske upar nahi obviously jaydikshit doesn't bother following up on the story and uh, trying to find out where and when the circus was um if maybe someone else had seen him out of his clown makeup you know maybe someone knew where he got employed afterwards you know nothing nothing instead he shows sahir all of their security protocols and tells him how to get past them So the bank gets robbed again and Jay and Ali aren't able to catch the thief. Uh the bank owner loses his faith in Jay and Ali, don't blame him, and decides to relieve them of their duties as dumbass bitches of the year. Boom, roasted. But Jay Dikshit finally starts suspecting Sahir and uh instead of going back to India, they decide to stay back and catch the thief anyway by manipulating Sahir's autistic brother these are the good guys by the way so the other brother samar that rhymed is the most typically autistic character that has ever been created um remember how i said uh, that they've tried to add more depth to the characters but in trying to do so they have essentially turned the same characters into caricatures because according to movies being autistic means having unusual body language a speech impediment childlike innocence and super intelligence apart from being autistic summer is a marvel fan and a stalker he stalks katrina kaif and taking advantage of his childlike innocence jay dikshit manipulates him into being jealous of his own brother again these are the good guys so feeling jealous of sahir Summer asks him to switch places with him during their act the one that they put out in the great indian circus sahir gets angry and tells summer that the reason that summer has to be the one who has to stay in the box is because of his developmental disorder the thing is though i've watched that act multiple times summer is never in the box okay i think i need to explain the act sahir begins the act by dancing with Katrina Kaif I don't remember her character's name I'm sorry the two of them dance 
and Sahir's character gets killed by I don't know demons and he is put in a box because he's dead and then they open the box and the box is empty and Summer appears from somewhere else and he joins Katrina Kaif and then they dance and then Summer leaves again but we hear a knocking sound from the box that Sahir had been locked in and Sahir comes out of it. When was Summer in the box? Why do I know this so well? So anyway, Jay Dikshit thinks that he has driven a wedge between the two brothers and um, they make up and unnecessary shit happens. Okay, so the bank has one branch left that has not been robbed yet. And Jay Dikshit calls the bankers, the same people who had sacked him and acts really sassy because he knows who the thieves are and how they are robbing the banks and everything and fails to stop the last bank from being robbed. Okay, I feel like I haven't pointed out the action sequences being stupid even once in this video. Uh, but I feel like you need to because they constitute a major part of the runtime. So I don't think there is any point in mentioning the fact that they jump up their bikes almost eight feet up in the air from a flat surface onto a flat surface. But what I do want to mention, however, that while they are jumping up their bikes in the air, there are cops waiting right under them who had barricaded their way with cars, which is why they had to jump up their bikes up in the air. Those cops who have guns in their hand, by the way, just stand there waiting for the thieves to pass over them. Haan, aap goli to nahi maar sakte na. Kya patra tire mein lag jaye? Phir kaise bhaagenge wo log? Okay, I swear I'm almost done talking about this movie. Let's get to the climax. So the thief Sahir and Samar decide to subvert expectations by not ending up at the edge of a cliff, but instead on a really high bridge. They could have easily escaped but Jay Dikshit brings out Katrina Kaif and they halt in their way. I would understand if a bad guy were holding Katrina Kaif hostage and they thought that they have to stay back and rescue her. But these are the cops. Katrina Kaif hasn't committed a crime. What are they threatening to do to her? Why did you stop? Huh? Anyway, they jump off of a bridge and die and the theme poem plays for the nth time. Bande hai hum uske hum pe kiska zor umido ke suraj nikle saru ho rade hai fala di himmati har kadam apne haato kismat likhne haa chale hai. Okay, do you remember that before releasing this movie, they had not released any of the songs from the movie because they said that they had worked really hard on the visual aspect of the songs. So they wanted the audience to experience them for the first time on the big screen. So my takeaway from this movie is that that was a good decision because I cannot really imagine anyone listening to a single one of its songs in its entirety without the visual aspect to distract them from it. Okay, we're done with the movies. So I have made up a drinking game which you can play if you want to revisit the series which I hadn't intended when I started making these videos, but you know, do what you want. This doesn't include stuff that's obvious, as in I'm not going to ask you to take a shot every time someone defies physics. This game has more obscure stuff from the movies, stuff that you would care even less about. So let's get into it. Take a shot every time Ali dodges something and makes this face. He pouts. Take a shot every time Abhishek Bachchan gets on a helicopter. Take a shot every time someone plays basketball. It's in all three of these movies. You'll have to really look for it in the third one. I love pretending that I actually have reach and people are going to play this game. Take a shot every time there is a close-up of John Abraham's shoes. Take a shot every time Amir Khan adjusts his hat. Take a shot every time someone walks towards or away from the camera in slow motion. 
टेक अ शॉर्ट एवरी टाइम ऋतिक रोशन फॉल्स स्लैश जम्प्स ऑफ अ हाई प्लेस इन स्लो मोशन टेक अ शॉर्ट एवरी टाइम समन टीयर्स थ्रू अ फिजिकल ऑब्जेक्ट लाइक अ वॉल और अ माउंटेन ड्यू पोस्टर टेक अ शॉर्ट एवरी टाइम समन मैंशन वेकिंग अप अर्ली इट्स अ स्टेबल इन दीज मूवीज फॉर सम रीजन ओके ओ स्टैट री वॉर्निंग वेन आई से टेक अ शॉर्ट आई मीन दैट ऑफ वॉटर और मिल्क और समथिंग बिकॉज इफ यू प्ले दिस गेम सिंसियरली विद एल्कोहॉल यू विल डाई आई एम सीरियस ओके नाउ टाइम फॉर द मेन इवेंट धूम रीडक्स एट नाइन थ्री they could have easily escaped but jay dikshit she should have said robber robber rob robber robber what is the word is it robber 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 robbery ravery sorry 